Earth, so make sure it's her <laughs> reputation. Well, we are um, absolutely delighted to be here. It's Christmas again. It's hard to believe how quickly the year has gone by. Yeah, I was wondering how your 2015 looked. When you look back, what do you remember? Um, over the last couple of days, I was uh, looking back in the, um, to look at some of the world events that happened this year. There's a place on the web called End Memo, and they, they summarize a number of major events. I think it's based on how, number, how many newspaper coverages there are about this event over the year. So they listed, I think, 15 or 16 of these big events. Well, if you take a look at them, um, actually, uh, it, it's a little depressing because the bad news is far outweigh the good news. <laughs> there are a couple of good things. They found water on Mars. That, I think, is a good thing, you know. <laughs> and later on, they made a climate change deal near the end of the year. stuff is bad news. Back in January, there was the Charlie Hebdo attack in, in Paris. We had an earthquake in Nepal, 7.9. We had uh, a Greek financial crisis. We had a migrant crisis in Europe. And uh, then we had a Paris terrorist attack later, and then now we have an interest rate hike. <laughs> yeah, not good news. Um, and there are many other things that we remember that are not there, like the mass massacres in, Cal in California only a month ago. Many people look at this news and, and say, you know, how could there be a God in a world like this? There's so much pain, there's so much suffering. There's so much evil, there's so much injustice. There's a phrase called the loud silence of God. Exactly, very good. Where is God when it hurts? And it's not just world events or theological, theoretical things. But oftentimes it's very personal. You know, th this year I lost two very close friends. In the space of uh, three months, I lost two friends that I've known for 25 years. Yeah, you know, um, it's, it's like pain. You could be an oncologist and you could talk about cancer. And uh, pain is like that when we talk about world pain. But when it's our pain, it's like, it's not that you're the oncologist. You have cancer. What does God say to people like that? Well, as a Christian, we believe that God has said something about this. God has had given us a clear and loud message for over 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. 
these words do not necessarily show up in the news news headlines. But it is very loud and very clear. Um, you know, uh, in, in Luke chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, there was this interesting passage. I'll just ask Lily to read it in Chinese. This is a really cool passage that described the world at the moment of Christ's birth. Yes, at the time of Christ's birth. It tells, it says, who is in, who is the ruler in, in the ruler in Judea? Who is the king of Judea and who are the high priests? These are all the highlights, the, high, the headlines of those days. But it says, during that time, it says, the word of God came to John in the wilderness. The word of God may not come where the, where the headlines are. It may not be in a very noticeable place. It appears in the wilderness. It can appear in a very cold community center in Palo Alto. God continues to speak to people, even though we're not always good at noticing it. Let's think about what God wants to tell us this Christmas. The passage we just read came from just before that. It was in Luke 2. This could be the, the, the most famous Christmas in the Bible. Let me unbundle it a bit for you. This describes a scene that occurred um, in Bethlehem, which is only six miles out of Jerusalem. The, in verses 8 and 9, we see a bunch of shepherds and who met an angel. And they, the light, the glory of God shone about them. And they were very afraid. That's the, the setting. Those are the shepherds. And then the second sort of piece is the angels who talk to them. The main message there is fear not. He says, why fear not? Because there is very good news of great joy for all people. Not just the news, but there's also a sign. And sign is a baby wrapped in clothes, lying in the manger. And in the third part of this passage, suddenly they were joined by these hosts from heaven, singing this song. And they said, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those in whom in his favor rests.
the shepherds are filled with wonder and they say, let us go and see this thing. Yeah. So, um, you know, in, in a sense, everything that God, the message that God has given us, sitting in this passage. The glory of God, so three things, the glory of God, the second is do not fear, and the third is let So let me unbundle that for you. See, the, center, the central message that, that the Christian response to the world's problems is God gave us a sign. It's to all the problems we cannot seem to solve, God gave us a baby. It's strange. Why would a baby solve all these complicated problems we cannot solve? The Bible says this is not just an ordinary baby. It is, he is God incarnate. That God came into our world, this very messy world, to tell us something very important about Himself and about us. What is this message? Why did God become man? It, 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 I think I'll just group it as the three R's of Christmas. Very quickly, the first R is to reveal. God became man to reveal something to us. The second R is to reconcile. To make right something that is broken. The third R is to redeem is to bring back something that his, is to, is to call on to himself a people. To reveal, to reconcile, and to redeem. You notice that, what, what is it that God reveals? You notice when the, when the, the angels showed up, it says, the glory of God shine around them. See, so what does reveal mean? Reveal means that I show you something. The Christian faith is based on revelation. We say that what is in God's heart cannot be seen until he reveals it to hum human beings. It's like I have this, my hand in my pocket, but you don't know what I'm holding. Yeah, when I pull it out, you see it's my keys. This is reveal, to reveal. And the Bible says the glory of God was revealed to the angels. What is it that they saw? Jesus, what did Jesus come to reveal? I think there are many aspects of this, but I'm just going to focus on one today. Uh, if I were to focus on one thing, I would say it is love. The child of Christmas is a gift of love. And his revealed God's love for us. The Gospel of John puts it this way. He says, no one has ever seen the Father, but the one and only Son, who is himself God, is in closest relationship with the Father and has made himself known. Uh, 
Yeah, Hebrews 1, 1 to 3 puts it this way. Go. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. Exact represent it means that once you have seen God, once you have seen Jesus, you understand something deep about God. It, Jesus himself puts it this way. This is one of my favorite conversations about Jesus. John 14, 8 to 9, Jesus is comforting his disciples because he said he was leaving. And his disciple Philip says, Show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. He said, I'm going to my Father. He said, show us the Father. Yeah, Jesus, what does Jesus say? Jesus says, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been with you all this time, anyone who has seen me, Totally amazing that this man would say that. Yeah, because he said God to us. So what is love? Uh, let me just go. John one, John first John three sixteen says, "This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down His life for us." And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. So one thing which is very obvious about love is love is relational. It's between two beings. I cannot have a love relationship with this, this, this puppet. It's only between relations, beings. The Bible says God is love. How do we know that? He became a man to tell us that. Love is not only relational, it's also sacrificial. Who in your life has loved you? How do you know that? Think about someone who's loved you. I know my mother had loved me because I remember some of the things she did for me. I remember her staying up at night sewing for me before I went to college because I was going to a cold place. We know love by cost paid. Sometimes we can't tell that someone loves us. Like it was harder for me to know my father loved me. Because my father was a typical Chinese man of his generation. You know, if you take home a 95, they'll say, what happened to the other five? It, he, he, maybe that's the way he expresses love. But towards the later part of his life, he, he retracted cancer. He became very sick. 
and um, he had an operation. Uh, had an operation. He couldn't talk, and he he had to have a hole made. And uh, when I came home from work, he would cover the hole and he would say, How was your day? His eyes would just follow me around. He, he used to have these stuff in his pocket, his throat. would take it out and he'd offer it to me. When we see someone give us their last breath, we know that they love us. We know love by cost more than we know it by benefit received. Some very rich kids, they may not feel loved, even though their parents give them a lot. Because they feel like, well, dad has a lot of stuff anyway. Yeah. But in Christ Jesus, we saw the love of God. We saw it in the way he lived. We saw the way he touched and healed. People that nobody wanted to touch, like leopards and prostitutes. We saw the way he washed his disciples' feet. And finally, we saw the way he died on the cross. And because of all these things, we changed our perspective about God. If that is God, then this is not a God to be feared. Because this is a God who loves us. The second thing that Christ did was to reconcile. He didn't just reveal God, he reconciled us with God. What does it mean to reconcile? Well, to reconcile means, means to restore friendly relationships. To bring back together things that were separated. The two that were in, things that were in amnesty were now in harmony. Yeah, so, so the Bible says man and God were in amnesty. Yeah, um, you know, uh, man was created to be with God. But we, we sin. And because of this sin, we're in a state of separation with God. And Jesus, miraculously, able to bring together the pieces that were in conflict. He was like a peacemaker. Yeah, Secretary John Kerry is, is often, Secretary of State is trying to make peace in the Middle East. Yeah, 
But the, the situation in the Middle East is really messy. It's hard to imagine how the Arabs and the Jews are ever going to reconcile. But the Bible says the, the, the gap between God and man is even greater. Yeah. You, you notice one of the key messages in the, in, that the angel comes out along to say is do not fear. You know, the, the, this is the same message that the angel said to Mary, do not fear. This is the same message when, when the angel showed up to Zechariah and told him about the coming Christ. Same message, do not fear. Why are they so afraid? Well, you say, well... But you know, there's something deeper in our fear of God. Yeah. You know, the Bible says we are sinful. And as we get closer to God, we become so aware of our own sin. Let's suppose you think that you're not for. Then you're often defensive. You're anxious. You're very afraid of criticism. You're always looking over your shoulder. Yeah, and if somebody shows up in your department who's more qualified than you for the job, it has all the skills that you should. Then, then you know what? When that person gets near you, you're afraid. And the reason for that is the closer you get, the more your sense of imposterness gets revealed. Yeah. The, the, the Bible says we're afraid of God. Because as we get closer to God, we become aware. Because just like Adam and Eve, we retain this awareness of our own sin. Hmm. We used to have two cats, one called Marco, one called Polo. Now, uh, you know, Polo is, is always a hunter. He's always out killing things. He used to drag home squirrels and rabbits and even a snake, birds. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Marco, Marco is kind of a timid soul. Marco hangs around at home. Yeah. And then one day we brought home a dog. The dog is actually a very good dog. Like this dog would not hurt a cat. But when the dog came in, the cats were terrified. Yeah. Marco has to stay home, so he got used to the dog much more quickly. But Polo was very suspicious. He was hiding outside all the time. He watched this dog like crazy. Do you know why? Well, Polo looks at the dog and says, Whoa, he's much bigger than me. If, if I were him, I would be, he, he would, I would kill me. <laughs> yeah, and so Polo took a long time. Eventually, he became very good friends with him. Yeah. 
Yeah, it took a long time. When we approach God, we are afraid. Because we look at this and say, well, gee, me, I'm dead. Because I know that if I were the holy God, I would never forgive me. Yeah. But the Bible says there is forgiveness for your sin and it comes from the shedding of blood. In fact, there's, if there's no shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. For sin. And Jesus is the Lamb of God who died for our sin. Because of this, we are reconciled with God. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God redeemed us from Christ. The sin that's inside us that causes problems within us is washed clean through the through the blood of Christ. That's why Jesus, the Bible says, do not fear. Do not fear. And then he gives you the reason for it. Because there's good news of great joy. Because there is a Savior. Someone that will save you from your sin. And the sign is this baby. Lying in a manger. So there's a reason for do not fear. Because Jesus came to reconcile. In, in that little song, O Little Town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. And then it says, yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. So, you know, Jesus came to redeem. Okay, so he came to reveal, he came Reconciled, then he came to redeem. What does it mean to redeem? It's to it's to recover and to rescue. Is that you? Okay. So uh, <laughs> a number of years ago. There is a, there was a little girl. It is your phone. <laughs> Sometimes you see the most obvious things. <laughs> Everyone except me, of course. There was a little girl in Texas that was stuck in a stuck in an abandoned mine, uh, abandoned well. It was very narrow. It was only eight inches wide, that little thing. And she was 18 months old. She fell down. She broke her arm. And then she was stuck there for over two days. They had to dig a separate shaft par parallel to, to this, this, this uh, my, uh, well. And then they had to dig horizontal to bring the girl out. The whole thing took over two days, 58 hours. And when they finally pulled her out, they had the cameras on and everybody was cheery. Yeah. 
this little girl, her name is Jessica McClure. This was when she visited the White House. <laughs> when that girl was pulled out of that pit, she was redeemed. She was pulled out. Jesus came to reveal. Jesus came to reconcile. And then he, he came to pull out your life from the pit. He wants to call a people onto himself. A group of people with new identity, a new purpose, people that he calls the children of God. He calls them my, my treasured possession, my hesed. Yeah. Yeah. This is what he calls us to be. You know, it's a very personal journey. We all have to take this road. God, God revealed to us His love and our deep sin. God reconciled for us this breach between Him and us. But that alone is not enough. It's like God, there's a pill, prepare the pill to, to save you from your poison, but you have to take it. You have to take it. Otherwise, it's no good for you. And so the, the, the angel, the, 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 the shepherds that, day, that night, After all this, they said, let us go. He said, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened. When we respond to God's love, then the objective reality of Jesus Christ becomes a subjective experience in our lives. And suddenly we understand the message of Christmas. That it's not somebody else singing. We, our hearts start singing. So we need to each receive Jesus' life. It's like to accept a gift that someone prepared. Yeah, some people say I have to figure out how to believe in him. Maybe if I spend enough time looking like a Christian, I'll believe. And then when I believe, I will receive. But John 1, 12 says, to those who receive him, those who will, to those who believe in his name, he will give the right to become the children of God. We receive first, then we, we have the ability to believe, and then we become the children of God. That's what it means to be redeemed. Yeah. You know, it's Christmas. And God has prepared a gift for every one of us. That gift is His Son, the Lamb of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. Let's pray.
But even before we knew we needed it, you have prepared for us a perfect Christmas gift. You say this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. And this is your answer to the world. A world full of pain and suffering. A world of injustice and of hurts. You have so loved us. You gave your one and only son. So that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life.